This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Fade to me, yes, ladies and gentlemen, once again, here we go with another ramble, and we go until uh, tonight, if you're too, go over that way, you're you're too far over this way, there you go, I, I, I don't know, but, uh, hello everybody, how are you, I was, t- I was talking to the girlfriend, what? Hi. Hi, yeah. Three day weekend, I, 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 hold on a second. I got, I've got to do something to your picture here before we show you. Here we go again. Okay. No, I have to do it. Uh, you know, I have again. to do it. Here we go. Shoot here we me. Go. Uh, I'll just Shoot do me this. Now. Here, here we go. Come on. Make it painless. What? What, what make what painless? Hey, Whoever's going to shoot me. There we go. Okay. Well, then we'll we'll make it that way. Okay. okay. All right. Now they'll be able to see you in a second Hi. here. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. No. God damn it. Hold on. You know something? This is terrible. This is really terrible. I... Hmm. No, that's too little. Uh, that's too much. Let me see. I need to get you in here before we go on. I came in here before. Really? You you asked me to come in, and I came in. I sat there, and I came in twice. Mm-hmm. Oh, now I don't even have your head. That's good. That's okay. I'm trying. I'm trying to to get her set up here, and it's not. It's not working. It's right? fine. Now it's no. Now it's not fine. Wait till we. You, it, uh, that's. Uh, hold on. We'll, we'll turn it that way. Okay, now I'm gonna. I'm. I, well, let's see what what happens here. Hold on a second. I've got to do one more thing to the camera. Why is that not? Why is the camera not showing it the same way it should? Huh? Hi. That's weird. That's very weird because if I if I do this, see how you're there, but uh, that's, Alex. Hmm? It doesn't interest me. It, well, does it, it? Well, I have a problem. I'm not, I can't get the, your camera to work right. So you know that's a, that's always a problem. Well, it's your problem, huh? It's, uh, uh, God damn it! Ah, yes, another Friday night, everyone. I hate this. I just absolutely hate this. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I did come in for my fitting. What? I did come in for the fitting. No, you didn't. I did too. Wait a minute. Don't hold, you say that. Hold on a second here. Hold, I'm holding. Hold on. Zoom. Let me do this. Uh, let me do this a little bit. I and need a drink. Go, <laughs> then we go apply. And then we go okay here. Okay. And let's... Here we it, are. The camera doesn't change. It doesn't change at all. Oh, I know what the problem is. I could come sit next to you. I know what the problem is. What is I, the problem? I'm going to fix it. Hold on. I'm fixing it. I'm fixing it. I'm holding. Yeah, I, I know what the problem was. There's what the problem was. See? Watch, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. That's what I wanted. Okay? Doesn't she look pretty now? Uh, Boy, that was work. <laughs> that was... You that believe was, the that complaining was, I have to live with? It isn't a matter of complaining. Well, what it's, is it that you were doing? You're it's complaining. It's a matter that I, that, I, that I had a problem, and then I suddenly realized what the problem was. But you solved it. Yes, but, you know, I mean, I'm doing a show here, and... So uh, your point is? My point is I'm doing a show here. So? And, it's, uh, and I've also got your color balance tonight, too. Okay, I so like color look, balance. So you look good. Good. Let's see here. How long did that take? That took five minutes off the show. Uh, 10.09. Let me make sure this is going out. Make sure every, You see, I mean, here, here's what happens. I have to uh, uh, check everything because I'm the bottle washer and, you know, and cook. everything. And cook and everything. Okay, there we go. It's now, Friday. It's Friday. Bum, bum. Bum, bum, I hate bum. that song. Bum, when you bum, sing bum, it. bum. It's Friday. It's Friday, and I have a three-day weekend. Why are you singing Chicago to It's Friday? Because it's my Friday. 
Chicago, Chicago, a hell of a town, a hell of a town, Chicago, Chicago. Da, 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 da. Whenever you start singing that, I'm going to go Chicago, Chicago. Whatever you want. Whatever I, wa- whatever I want to do. Just huh? shout it out. I'll just shout it out. There you go. Yeah. What a week we've had. Hmm? And it ends with our great president throwing paper towels out to these poor victims yeah. and survivors in Puerto Rico and saying what a great job he's doing. Yeah, well. Yeah. It's really sickening. Yeah. Each day he matches and passes the day before. It's like, what is he going to say now? Should I stop doing the TV thing? No, I love it. No, the reason I say uh, stop doing the TV thing, I call TV, it's, you know, video. Um, You call this radio. uh, (laughs) Okay, you got me. You got me. Okay. Uh, No, I like the video. That's why I watch it. Is that why you watch it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. See you and the gang. Yeah. Yeah. You and the gang. You, meaning you, Alex. Uh huh. And the gang, the yeah. call-ins. Yeah. And then okay. I get to see me on. I see me on Monday. You see you on Monday. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you just saw yourself being chopped around there. I didn't see it. Yeah. Uh, because I'm, I, I, you know, I'm trying to figure out how to do this thing right. I understand. You know, but no, the only reason I'm thinking about doing stopping doing the TV part of it is that, I, you know, I'm doing a radio show here, essentially. And now I find I'm, I'm, I have so much I have to watch out for with the TV. From here on in, if you want to be on this show, you've got to come in five minutes ahead of time so I can set up the I camera. I came in a quarter of today. Yeah, well, I so didn't. So there, I, I was sitting right here. I was busy with other stuff. Well, don't put the blame on me. Yeah. Well, so yeah. there. And also, you know, you're wearing a shirt that does what they call moraine. I don't care. This is my shirt. It's on a hook. It's yeah, but near look, your look office. Look at what it does. It's moraine. If you, if you look over here, well, it's not moraine there. It's only moraine. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's not fine. Moraine. This is my Friday night shirt. And I am wearing shorts, everyone. Yeah. Let not me, just underpants. One more thing. Got here it. we go again. Got it. Bring this up just a tad. There we go. Now you're fine. Now, now you're perfectly. Let's no, touch. Well, How do we do no, it? No, is here. it this way? No, it. Well, it, it, it doesn't work. Just come <laughs> is more. Is it this way? <laughs> come more over this way. Okay, get in the center. Of the, no, 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 no. <laughs> See what I mean? It becomes a TV show, and I don't want it to be a TV show. Oh, I thought you were saying marriage becomes a I TV I'm show. Gonna, I'm gonna do away with TV things. Too. No. Too much work. Then I'm gonna stop coming on Friday. Really? You're that egotistical, huh? Absolutely. Yeah? Really? Okay. Um, so we have Columbus Day off on Monday. And then you're taking Friday off. And I'm taking Friday and the following Monday off. Boy, do you ever go to work? When, when have I taken off last? I took a day off to go to the U.S. Open. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You take off a lot of time. Not really. Yes, you do. No, I do Yes, you do. Yes, you do. But that's okay because I'm kind of your pimp. You are. And I send you out to work, and, you know, I hope you're not holding out for me. Bring the money home. Bring the money home, exactly. And, uh, have, you see, I'm always having to do things here. Well, because you're, because you're producer, uh, which, you're which producer if I, if also. I, if, well, if I were just doing audio, you wouldn't see me doing all this stuff. No, but this is fun, watching you make all the mistakes that you make. Do they really like it? Well, yeah, they love to watch we only got a couple of people listening to yeah, us. Yeah, and it's, it's uh, 16 minutes. Because we're not, we're, we're, uh, there are only a few people watching. So I don't know if it is. So it's maybe worth we it. should start arguing. Huh? Maybe we should start probably, arguing. Probably. That would probably help a great deal. <laughs> you get a big list of arguing. arguing. Uh, I like my pants. Or, I'm, I'm wearing these again. I'm back. It's winter. Winter is arriving. I'm back to the jammies. We're going from 80 degrees to 81 degrees. It was 81 today. It was a great, ridiculous, this weather. I wore wool on Wednesday only because I'm so sick of summer clothes. Big mistake. It went to like 83, mm-hmm. and I'm wearing wool. Yeah. And I no, was, I'm having a problem. What's your problem? This thing. Oh, here we go. This is the uh, See, Apple every, Watch. Everything goes back to him. No, no, but no, the Apple Watch. It's all about All him. of a sudden, the face on the Apple Watch has come apart from the body of the well, of, of the thing. I think you need to make a reservation no. with an expert. 
What, what do they call it? The, the genius. Geniuses, yeah. The genius. Yeah, they'll say, oh, yeah, your wa- the face has come across from your watch. It, it, it happens a lot, I found out. So you get What it, it is is there's you. adhesive here, and the adhesive, I guess, maybe during the summer gets Dried hotter up or, or dries whatever. up. They, it, it, it's a flaw in the way they created this. They should have made it so this thing adheres to the, to the body of the thing without using an adhesive, okay? Um, but anyway, so I have to take it in. So you take um, it in. Yeah, so it takes time. On, uh, it I gives mean, them something to do. Money for cabs. Ca- get, get them out of the house. Money for cabs. Take they, a subway. Because the Apple store, well, the Apple store isn't off a good subway it's, stop. T- if you take the M2, it takes you right to 72nd that's Street. A, that's not a subway train. It's an express bus. 72nd? 72nd and 5th, and you walk over one block. What, 74th? Yeah, and you walk over to Madison and then walk up two blocks that's it mm. well I'll, uh, i'm probably going to take a cab so Save i get the cabs time. for so i get times the, when no, we really no, need cabs I'll, 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 I'll use the cab because i want to get there on time okay <laughs> for what time is your appointment and what day it's on monday at 1 and um everything i've read online the, the people have this happen and they just give them a new watch but i'm going to buy a new watch in december so you know here we go again yeah but anyway, so it, 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 it you know, well, well, I'll buy a watch in December if they treat me well with this one. <laughs> you know what I read? A guy wrote a thing. He, he, I love him. I love him. This was maybe three, four years ago. And he had the face on his watch come undone. Come so we took it to the Apple store. And this was in, in London, I think. Took it to the Apple store and they said, oh, well, that doesn't happen often. And the guy in back of him had the same problem, <laughs> right? It doesn't happen that often. Uh, uh, it'll be five days before we can get a replacement in here. He said, but you're selling them in the store. Why don't you give me one of those? Oh, we can't give you one of those. Because have- they're new. Well, because they give you a refurb. <laughs> yeah, I know. All right. So he said, I said, but I don't want to have to have to wait five days for my phone. I just bought, he bought it 15 days earlier. It was one day out of its <laughs> return it if you don't like it stage. Stage. Okay. So what he did was he said, okay, well, fuck you. Um, and he stood there as people uh, at the uh, Apple Watch desk, you know, they have in the, in the Apple store, showing prospective buyers of the <laughs> Apple Watch, his Apple Watch, and how the, the body of it had, the face of it had come off the body. And they gave him a and, new watch they quickly. Were, they were, he was showing it to everybody. Look and, at my watch. And people were turning around and walking out and not <laughs> buying it. Did they give him a new watch? Uh, it didn't say. Oh. I think he still had to wait for his watch. That's I mean, funny. That's what I'm going to do if I don't get one in my service immediately. I'm just going to go around to people and say, see, look. Yeah. Well, you're at that age where you could get away with it. Yeah. You know. But, I mean, I really, that guy's my hero. <laughs> He's my hero. But, uh, but anyway. Oh, speaking of heroes. What? What are we watching tomorrow? What do you mean? Where are we going tomorrow? Well, what do you mean speaking of heroes? Well, there's a hero in there. In where? In Blade Runner. There's a hero in every movie. Well, I know, but we're going to see a hero. We're going to go see Blade Runner. Blade Runner, Runner 20, what, 49? Yeah, or? it's gotten pretty good reviews. They say there it has, it's long. Yeah. It's like about two and a half hours, something like well, that. Well, we have the, the reclining seats. And we have the big bucket of popcorn that oh, we can right. go refill. Right. Oh, yeah, with free refill Re- and also free uh, refill in the soda. On the soda, so yeah. we're ready. To, we're ready we're, for a long movie. We're ready for a long movie. <laughs> and then we got the comfy chairs. We got the comfy chairs. Yeah. Uh, we, yeah. Same chairs. Okay, so you got your uh, your DNA thing back. Yeah, I, I got my DNA I thing. I haven't gotten mine yet. You want to hear what mine said? Well, yeah, let's find out what It said saying. I was 88% Jewish. Like, duh. <laughs> and it said nothing else. It said nothing else. What about the other 12%? There, there was a 1% chance you were Chinese, I think they said. <laughs> no, there was a minus something. You, no, there was a less than 1% right. Chinese. Chinese, okay. Yeah. So I'm 88% Jewish, well, duh. Yeah. And it's the other 12% I'm interested in. But it doesn't say anything. I know. I have to go into look at it deeper. Oh, oh can you look deeper yeah. into it? Yeah. Oh, okay. But, I mean, I think this is, this is a ripoff. It's 79 not, bucks to find out you're Jewish. It's 69. Well, I got it on sale, remember? Oh, they 69. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
because I got two of them. To find out that you're Jewish. Right. <laughs> that I'm 88% Jewish. Like, duh. You know, I'm, yes. I'm, I'm kind of mad at, uh, at, uh, at uh, Amazon. What did they do to you Well, now? what they've done, first of all, I, I did buy the Echo for $79. They had a deal on it. It was normally $150, $160, or something like that, and it was $79. Now they have a $99 Echo that has better sound. (laughs) You don't need another Echo, Alex. Well, I want an Echo in every room of this house now. (laughs) Really, I I want, uh, I I want to get, but they're gonna have, there's a little Echo, a little round one, that has a, a, A a screen and everything. And you can set it by your bed instead of that clunky clock radio I've got. And it uh, tells you that you can see the temperature and you can tell it when you want it to wake you up. So every night while you're sleeping, I'll go, Echo. Don't you dare. Echo. <laughs> Don't uh, you dare. Would you please uh, uh, set me up for, you know, wake me up at uh, 10? I added two things to your list. Have you looked at your list lately? Oh, what happens is. Someone's sending bubbles. Oh, those, those are, they like what we're what talking about. What does that mean? They, they like us for some reason. You like us? Send me more bubbles. Yeah. I want to see them going across Anyway, again. hold on a second. Uh, you, you see, what happens is, you say to Echo. I said, Echo, add to the list. Yeah, well, you say Alexa, but we, you, oh. can have it, you can have it so you say Echo. And I preferred it to be Echo than Alexa. We have because a friend some, Echo. Oh, and you, we also have a friend have, Echo. you also have somebody in this household named Alex. And if you went, Alexa, yes. would, uh, you, you know. Yeah. Look, 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 look. Yeah, I know. They Look, they're all doing the little bubbly things. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So nice that you're listening. Isn't that cute? And they have little hearts going. Uh, and it's, isn't that cute? That you didn't know cute. they could do that, did no. you? No. I don't know why they're doing it tonight. Everybody, do it like crazy. Because we're, we're on it. Look, see? Uh, see? Oh, and there's even a picture of a person here and there. Uh, he pops up every now and then. Yeah, oh, that's uh, cute. Yeah, it's great. Cool. Thank you, guys. Anyway, so what happens is you say Alexa, or in this case, we say Echo. Echo, add to the list. A- add to the list, and then you tell them what you want. And then when I go to the store, um, where's my Alexa app? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. And where's my? Come on. It's wherever you left it. Where it's wherever I left As it. As my yeah. mother used to say. Wait a minute. The Alexa, uh, the Alexa app is was right here yesterday oh there it is okay Amazon Alexa okay so then I go over here to the lists see I go here lists and let's see what she added hmm uh, uh, golden brown mustard spicy brown comes inside of two yeah and I have it as wild as uh, and I have wool light down there and I did well. something else no you didn't yes I did well then it didn't work wow what did you say I'll go say it again so you, I'm not going to tell you. Oh, okay. But anyway, so, it, you know, it... Uh, if you ask her what's on the list, will she read the whole list? I, I don't know. What's on my list, Echo? You have to go in the other room. No, I know, but will she repeat what's on the list? Uh, uh, she might. She might. But here, it, it says, so far, I put in the Woolite, and you put in the Goulden's Brown Mustard, Spicy Brown Mustard. Something like that. Yeah. Okay, so... See, so I have my little shopping list. Yeah. Isn't that nice? I'm going to shop. I online. love that. I'll tell you, I love Echo. I really think it's, uh, I think Amazon has established a market that Apple has try, has been trying to work on for a while. What does but Apple have that, that would compare they to? They don't that? have anything that compares to it, but they do have something in the works, oh. like Apple Home or something it's called. And... But, the, the, you know, Amazon cornered the market on it. This was the most popular item of Electronic, the last holiday season. Electronic item. An electronic item of the last holiday wow. season. Wow. And, you know, you started out by going, ah, why would you get that? And the fact of the matter was, it really is good. You, you're getting to like it, aren't you? Well, for certain things. Well, yeah, for certain things, like the list, so, uh, like a uh, timer for cooking, like saying hey i want because i subscribe to their amazon music service yeah, like I said, for four dollars a month i want to play bonnie Raitt. so when i was and cooking, then she'll start playing it start playing bonnie Raitt. For yeah her. and that was nice because it was all mixed yeah yeah so i mean you know it, it you, you what do you mean you don't like it you're using it I like didn't say i didn't like it i use it for like three things and if you have an uh, electronics in your home like 
all your lights are you can on. Tell them to turn up the t- lights. Dim the lights and turn whatever. Turn it on. Yeah. So you know, it 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 it's it's really a very good idea they came up with, and it gets better every every month. You know, they keep coming up with new little tricks it can do and so on. And then they, they, they send you suggestions of what you should ask Alexa. Uh-huh. Like you can play Jeopardy with Alexa. Get out of here. You say, really? uh, uh, Alexa, let's play Jeopardy. And so she then asks you questions, <laughs> or, or answers rather, and then you have to ask the question. question. And uh, there's some guy on Jeopardy who's like winning. He's over $300,000. I think Ann was telling me that the other day about Jeopardy. And I said, well, you watch it all the time. Well, I watch it occasionally. But she was talking saw. about somebody well, that... Well, I recorded it tonight because I want to see this guy. Oh, well, she was talking about the guy. Yeah. Yeah, it she was watches sp- it Supposedly, he's done about 300000 so... Is that big for Jeopardy? Yeah, well, I mean, they interviewed him today. And he, he kind of... Act, he was kind of watching it every night. Uh, but I think he, he's not supposed to say how it turns out. After. Oh, because they already filmed it. They already did it months sure, ago, sure. right? You know, and he may have walked away with millions for all we know, or he may have like flopped after four hundred thousand. But they don't want him to say that yeah. publicly. Well, I'm sure he had to sign something. Yeah, and they like him too because he's funny and he's quirky and you know. Good looking. You saw him? No, I didn't. No, he was not good looking. Where did I see him? Yeah, what nerds are good looking? Yeah. You're a nerd. Well, I'm not good looking. Well. I'm but ugly. <laughs> you have a nice personality. Actually, I looked at pictures of me when I was younger, and I was, I was pretty good looking. When you had that comb over? What comb over? That comb over that you had. I didn't have a comb Actually, over. I, I never had a comb you over. You had a comb over. What? Are you talking about when I had uh, when I had long hair? Yeah. No, that wasn't a comb that over. That was a comb no, over. No, it well, wasn't a comb over. it looked like a comb over. <laughs> no, it was, I... I you I, were losing I, your hair. No, I wasn't yes, you losing were. my hair. Yes, you were. You're... Uh, Where? I don't... Uh, I'll, I'll bring up the page. No, I don't I'll, want to. I'll bring up the page. You, let's all go to uh, uh, gabnet.net, okay? And then let's, oh, we have to wait for that picture to come up. Well, let me go here. Let me write right in here. Uh, gabnet, uh, gabnet.net, and then forward slash. Comb over. ABL uh, dot HTML. Okay, everybody, there are all the pictures of me. Oh, wait a minute. What happened? What happened? I did Gabnet.net. Oh, I see. I did it at the wrong place. Okay. Uh, copy. Uh, let me see here. Where are we here? Uh, and, um, here, oh, what, what happened? Gabnet.net. Oh, there's a comma in there. Silly boy. I can't type anymore. Do you know it's 1028? What? Just saying. Life in the passing lane. Here we go. There we okay, go. Okay, so where do I have a comb oh, over? That is, that is not a comb that over. That is a comb over. No, that's not a comb over. <laughs> that is not a comb over. I'm telling you. This. That's not that, a comb over comb either. Over. That's I just had a lot of hair. You didn't have a lot of hair. I have. Oh, look at all the hair. It goes no, down to long. there. it's long. It's long. I'm telling you. Uh, it, it's not, uh, it's not I'm, not, I'm not bald there. I didn't meet him with hair. He had no, by the time I met him, he was gone with hair. Hair was gone. Yeah. Gone yeah. hair. Yeah. It's, um, just saying, it's a, a 820, 1028. Do you want me to roll over? You know, people, you can write on the chat as to whether you think I looked like I was doing a comb over or not. Uh, but nobody's writing anything like that. They're not even sending smiley faces anymore. Should I roll over? That's what she said. <laughs> Roll me over. It's 1029. Yeah. I'm coming over. Well, maybe I don't want you to come over. I'm coming over. Wait a minute. I haven't even put up the uh, the uh, Skype here. Hey. Hold, hold on a second. Let me get the, let me get the Skype uh, up here. And let me turn it on so that the people who have Skype and want to call me can call me. I may have you talk to them. I think I have to pee again. I think I had too much coffee. But uh, anyway... Um, so, um, uh, well, uh, this is the part of the program where we just wait for people to. Oh, let me let me let me change this here. Okay. See, I keep forgetting to do the very things that I one. have to do. To make it one. Yeah. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Panel. No Panel. There we go. Okay. So we're ready to there go. There we go. So now, if somebody calls, you know, we'll be able to 
answer the phones. But okay, so call. Cool. Last night we didn't have a lot of people. But it was a good show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we haven't had Rob this week. I found out why I wrote Rob a note, and I said, where have you been? Because when people don't, who regularly call don't call for a couple them. of nights, I miss them, yeah. and I, worried. I'm worried about them. So I, uh, I, I wrote him, and he's a big, you know, he's a big Yankees fan. Uh, and it's and the they playoffs. Didn't they lose big time. It's the playoffs. Have they lost? Last big night, time? I think they lost. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Anyway, so anyway, nobody's calling. See, but we have a lot of people watching. Oh, that's, that's good. That's nice. You know. Uh, so give us a call uh, if you have Skype, or you get Skype. Um, just you know, give call us in. give us a call. Uh, uh, and and our ID is GabNet Live. Okay, if if you want to give us a call, if you don't want to give us a call, well, and, oh the, oh here oh Jason Jason is here. Yes, Jason, Jason's here and Jason's Chip. To tonight is Jason's night. To Chip call. Gas. Now Chip, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Yes, Chip. Okay. Uh, Ch Chip on. Gas is the name. Do I, we know you by something else? Have you you've called before, haven't you? It might show up as William. Y yeah, yeah. Do you have a camera there? It's not on. No, no. it's not on. Turn it on. Okay, let me see. Okay. There's uh, right. to, to yeah, we're waiting for. Oh, Mike. there it is. Yeah, I see. Mike is calling. I've added him to the group. There we go. Hey, there you go. Mike. What do we now? Do we refer to you as Chip or Stud? Huh? Uh, people do, yes. What do you prefer? Chip is, chip is. Chip, good. I like chip. Chip. Okay, oh, yes. here's Phil Meyer. Oh, boy. All of a sudden, it's filling up. Or it's filling up with Phil. Um, yeah, there, here comes Phil. There he is. There's Phil. So we got Jason, Phil, Chip, and, and, and Mike, who doesn't have his camera on. And Mike? This, well, this is Alex. Wait, 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 hold on a second. What? Uh, Alex, I knew you personally. Uh, I met you in 1973, and I made a comment on the Facebook. You had Howard Stern like hair, and it was definitely not a comb over. Uh, also, if you look at the album Radio Dinner, mm -hmm. you'll see Alex's hair uh, uh, at that time. Yeah, uh, he's on the inside cover. Uh, yeah, he had Howard Stern hair. I had Howard Stern, Stern hair. Had thick hair. Yeah. Wait a minute, you got to talk into the microphone. Howard Stern had thick hair. Uh, so no, did Howard no. Stern had uh, had weaves. Oh now yeah. Now he well, has them. Yeah. It was Howard Stern like hair. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I would rather have his income than his hair. Yeah. Well, okay. Uh, I don't know if you can see. You know, if you look up the album online, Radio Dinner, but you know, there you can see a picture of Alex in what 72, 73? Yeah, with my girlfriend at the time, Naomi. Naomi. I met her too. Did you meet? Wait. Well, oh, you met her in New York. Yeah. Yeah. yeah in your apartment. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. She made me breakfast. <laughs> she made you breakfast. Yeah. And you? Yeah, both of us. Yeah. Well, she made me eat my lunch. Uh, <laughs> That was one of the craziest uh, relationships I ever had in my life. Why? Right. You know, and uh, uh, she and, and uh, she got on the National Lampoon album too, just because right. she was with me. And she then she wound up being on it more than I was. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I I thought your stuff was on the cutting room floor. Well, it, probably it, it was just this whole fight going on. Uh, it, Chris Surf was involved in it, and uh, Christopher Surf, and uh, who was the British guy? Uh, I'm trying to remember his name now. And and it was just everybody was arguing with everybody else. It was too many cooks trying to spoil this pot, you know. And um, uh, I did a thing called the Desiderata, which we called the Deteriorata, which was a takeoff on something Les Crane had done called the mm -hmm. Desiderata. And uh, I, I did it, and then they went out and got another announcer to do it instead of me. So I'm on there every now and then saying, hello, or <laughs> mystery train, or something. I don't know. But I'm not doing very much on that album. But, yeah. you know. And the Deteriorata yeah, was what they released as a single. You know. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't think I even got paid for that thing, if I remember correctly. You know. What else is new? <laughs> yeah. But I can claim I worked for the National Lampoon. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I, I just wanted to back you up on the hair thing. Yeah. 
Yeah, and you can take that from uh, to the bank because he has plugs. He knows what comb overs are about. <laughs> Where are yeah, plugs? Hey, Alex, I got something for you. Uh, yes, Chip. Yes, Amazon. Who is Alex Bennett? Gordon Schwartzman, December 18, 1939, the American radio personality and talk show host, known for his mix of left-wing politics and humor. You know what she's doing? She's reading from a Wikipedia. And <laughs> yeah, that's all she's doing. I, and, I, I, oh, that's and, great. And she's, yeah, I, did, I never, I never asked her, asked her of uh, Alex Bennett. You know, I do have I like tune in. I say um, uh, Echo, uh, Echo, tune in. And then she says, last tune-in station played, and then I hear uh, uh, Gabnet. You know, so. I asked Google about it, and Google just says, who? Who? Uh, <laughs> yes, right. Uh, no, every now and then, you know, I go into, uh, like, YouTube and put my name in, uh, and it's not for any ego purposes, but I have found so much stuff that I have lost. Years yeah, you ago, found, you found some files that yeah, other found, people found video files, that interviews that I post. did on video, uh, stuff that I did on video. It's pretty amazing, you know. So it's anyway. crazy when you Google yourself because, like, not as much comes up about me, but it's scary what I put yeah. in my wife's name. It sometimes it's shown a satellite image of our house and stuff. It's like, wow. dude, how is your name out there more than mine on the internet? It's just it's well, scary. she's, she's notorious, I guess. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I guess. If for some reason, you know. Well, they know your shopping habits, and you know they'll post stuff like on Facebook. They'll, the ads on the it side are geared towards how you shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. I've they surfed. Surf I've surfed at certain things, and all of a sudden, I see it on the side in Facebook. From taking yeah. from my Google surfing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Adorama has been uh, bombarding me with stuff. You know, I bought the camera, and they're still sending me all the things oh. for the same camera. You want to know what's worse? Yeah. Fios. Uh, Fios. <laughs> uh, I, I bought, put Fios in here. I got their extended uh, service uh, yeah. I, at an extra charge that they had to charge me because uh, I didn't do it with the original installation. I did it a week after I had it installed, and they had to pull everything out and put in all this new stuff. And I, yesterday get an email from Fios to the address that they have on record for me, the email address they have on record for me, offering me the extended version of Fios. Well, you still get letters oh, And I still mail. get things about, in the mail. The, about the internet service, the, the uh, uh, ultimate internet service that you can get. I bought these things. Take me off your fucking mailing list. <laughs> you know, because what it sends to me is the message that you really don't know what you did with me. You don't know who and, I am. You don't care. That's you don't right. recognize me as a customer. And uh, uh, yeah. I am a piece of meat and an email address. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and and uh, yes, Jason. I just wanted to say real quick because I was remembering yesterday's show. Yeah, I think Phil was talking about his microcell, his uh, 3G. This is yeah. the 4G microcell. Wow. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, I, well, I, I, they they still have them out because I, I need them too because I live by the water. Yeah. So yeah. what does it what does it do basically? It, it, it just it's basically a, a mini cell tower inside your house that works off your internet. Oh. Okay. So the, the 3G doesn't matter because the 3G is your internet. You know, and when you're in your house, you're usually using your Wi-Fi. Yeah. But so what it's kind it of a repeater. It it, yeah, it's a repeater, but it's for your yeah. uh, your w w cell phone. Uh, it, it allows your cell phone to use your Wi-Fi rather than look for a uh, an actual cell phone tower. Uh, it, it acts as a cell phone tower. It uses your internet. If right. you have unlimited, so you, you if get you have much unlimited, stronger signal. If you had yeah. unlimited and you switch to that, you lose your unlimited. No, uh, it, it's not something that you switch to. Did, did you get yours for free? Because I had to pay 200 bucks for mine. Uh, they gave it to me for free, uh, and I'm going to return it so that they don't charge me when I get uh, when I go over to Verizon. Yeah. They're not going to charge you? Because, like I said, I paid 200 bucks, and I my old one went bad, and I had to get a new one. I probably had the old one shaped like a Y or whatever upside yeah, down. Yeah, that's what I got. And then, you know, that one took a crap on me, and I had to get a new one. I had to pay 200 bucks for that, too. Well, they at the time they said this was ninety nine bucks, and they waived the fee. 
So, yeah, so they waived it. They, it's yours. You don't run it. You don't anything. You bought it, but they gave it to you. So don't worry right. about it. Okay. Recycle it. Yeah. Well, uh, the AT and T stores around the corner from me. Uh, you know, they, just... they don't want it. I'll tell you, they don't want yeah. it. All right. Yeah. Yeah. They'll All tell right. you to take it to the UPS store and have them ship it. And it's a pain in the ass. That's true. You you reverse it. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I understand. Um. Uh, Wait a minute. Here, here, wait a minute. Here comes Rob Alfano. Okay, Rob. Yes, uh, yes, Rob. Uh, I, I, I sent him a, a note. Uh, there he is. Uh, today, uh, saying, "Where were you? Where have you been? We're worried about you." Uh, and uh, he said, uh, "I've been watching my, uh, my uh, Yankees, Yankees lose, lose like crazy." <laughs> they, I know they lost last night. Did That's they the lose Yankees today? are good for. Did they lose today? Uh. <laughs> The manager lost today, yeah. <laughs> the manager lost today? He's getting the manager fired. Lost He'll today. be fired yeah. after this yeah. series. Uh, so how, uh, uh, does it look like they're going to the series or not? No. They're okay. down two. So wow. I, in other words, I've, I, I, I don't have to worry they about up, losing you for another seven days. They were up by days. five runs tonight, and the manager blew the five runs. Oh. <laughs> what did he do? I heard that, I heard that there he was some... He pulled Sabathia uh... out when he shouldn't have, first thing. Yeah, uh, and then it was a there was a, a, a you had you had uh, a, a a batter up who the cut the the, the umpire called uh, hit by a pitch okay. the ball didn't the, the ball hit the bottom of the bat not the batter uh, strike three three outs right after that they didn't Yankees didn't challenge it catchers telling them challenge it challenge it I heard it hit the bat nope they don't challenge it next pitch grand slam home run. So maybe they can have the Tigers uh, manager. We just got rid of ours too. What was the final well, score? Talk into the mic. Uh, what was the lost, final they score? Eight three. They lost n- uh, nine eight. Nine eight. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. So uh, they're not going to the playoffs. playoffs. They'll be done Sunday night. They'll be done Sunday night. Okay. Yeah. So I've got you. So I got you back. Rob. Yeah. Fuck it. Well, I, <laughs> well, I'm. <laughs> Fuck them. I mean, I lost you for three days because of them, and only to have well, this happen. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I've been I've been angry since this game started at five thirty. Wow. You know something? That's one thing. Extra I, innings. That's one thing I have never been involved in in my life, and that's getting upset over a sports team. Well, because you're not in the sports. Because I'm not into sports. That's why? That uh, would mean that would do it. You know, yeah. I, I just don't get I mad. I watch but... over 100 Yankee games in the regular season. I don't watch 162. I mean, if I'm home, it's on. So I take it pretty seriously. Well, my friend Shecky does that. He watches every Yankee game or I listens. I can't say I watch every He doesn't but... watch everyone, but he listens, listens to, to it. it. Oh, I'll listen to it, sure. Yeah, you know. I'll sit outside, I'll smoke a cigar, I might listen to it or bring my laptop and watch it. Yeah. Actually, but baseball I, is Baseball is the best on radio. It is. It's great. On I radio. love it. Well, you know, I, well, baseball. Look, baseball is great on radio because you can actually lie about it. Uh, uh, let me let me explain. This? No, no, I, I used no, I used to work for a guy by the name of Gordon McClendon, and McClendon uh, became famous for having a thing called the Liberty uh, Broadcasting Network, in which he did the play-by-play of all the major league games. But he wasn't ever there. Just watch TV. What he did were recreations. And so yeah. he would send somebody out to Chicago and put him up in an apartment overlooking the Chicago <laughs> Stadium, right? And then he would just, with his binoculars, see everything that's happening and send back just the basic raw scores, you know, of, of what was happening. And, you know, uh, you know, somebody gets up to bat, he does this, he does that, and before you know it, he's, he's out and blah, 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 blah. And um, uh, so that, uh, well, we're, we're really full up now. We're really full up now. How many we got here? Three, ten. Four, five, ten. Ten. Eleven ten. with Marjorie. Eleven. No, no, no. We got one, two, ten. three, four, five, ten six, seven, there. eight, nine, eleven ten. Online. Eleven with me. So it's a royal. Oh, oh, it's a. Royal it's a royal flush. flush. <laughs> yeah. <they're>... Mar- Marjorie. This <laughs> is number twelve. But... I'm number twelve. Okay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, was I? I like the flush. What I was saying <laughs> about. Uh, <laughs> what, what, what I was saying about. Uh, um, uh, the Yankees uh, about him Sports. about uh, about uh, Gordon McClendon. Gordon McClendon was that Gordon McClendon 
would do these recreations, and they were more popular than the actual games because he was so good at describing and them everything. and embellishing yeah. them and making them you know, sound more <coughs> exciting than they really were if you were there watching it. And so he became very popular, and his broadcast became, he was known as the old Scotchman. <laughs> and, yeah. and I ask you, uh, wait a minute, Robert, and, and now, so what happened was baseball got very pissed off at this. And so they went and started copywriting all the games so that he couldn't broadcast them. And that's why at the end wow. of every broadcast, you now hear any reproduction or recreation. They use that term. Uh -huh. Or recreation of this event is, pure, uh -huh. is purely Illegal. prohibited without the written consent Sent. of the commissioner of baseball. And that was because of Gordon McClendon, not because of television or anything else. That's gotcha. Really yeah. Did, uh, and then, of course, football and everybody else followed suit just because. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Renee has that's her that's hand up. Yeah. So, Bob, I, I feel for you, buddy, because I'm a San Francisco Giants fan, and we were out of it like two months ago. Mm -hmm. So, so happy. To, and it, it would be funny if I wasn't kidding. Uh, I'm serious about real. that. We yeah. really were out a while ago. But I'm sorry, but I thought you guys were going to go all the way. You were my yeah. next host. You know, we beat Kluber tonight. We beat the crap out of him. Best picture, pitcher in baseball. Got him out of the game in the second inning. He didn't make the third inning. Wow. And we had Girardi. this huge lead, and Girardi blew the game. How does he he can't play, I, don't blame, I don't blame any player on the field no. for anything well, that happened well, tonight. It was all it? the manager's fault. It? Hey, Rob, did you see? He doesn't Rob. even contest the call. What By the way, that? that's it, it, it. What is he having a stroke, I said? <laughs> he, he said. He said that Lindo hits a grand slam. He said they didn't right get there. Here you go. You got two two uh, New York Yankees fans here. Listen to them. Listen to how upset they are. I think he had a little <laughs> mini stroke tonight. But, but, I think he had a little mini. He has two calls. He's sitting there doing nothing. Yeah. I was like, but, no, your catcher is saying, it. "Challenge it, challenge it." The guy got nothing to lose. Maybe he threw a game. Game. I was like, I don't believe it. I don't know. He was on the pay. He's on the payroll of uh, the Indians, maybe. And with that, everyone, I'm saying goodnight. Oh, wait a minute. I'm, I'm saying good night. One thing about wait a minute. Hold on a second. She's going to say good night. Good night. Good night. Good, good, night. night. Good, good seeing you. Yes. Good night, dear. Yeah. Okay. There she, there she I, goes. I want to folks. ask you one thing about this liberal broadcasting. What? Uh, isn't the name of Pat Robinson's uh, 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 network called Liberty Broadcasting? Pat, Pat Robertson. I, I believe it's called. No, I think Pat, it is. Pat Robertson isn't Liberty. No, Pat Robertson is actually. Oh God, what's the name of it? Uh, it uh, it's the. Uh, it, it's the, it, 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 it's not the, the PTL. That was what's his name. Uh, yeah. Uh, but the, the, it has Christian some. Christian Broadcasting. No, oh, I'd have to look it up, but I don't think it is Liberty. But I, uh, but I do think there has One been of the, a Liberty. There's a Liberty University, and there's a. Uh, That's yeah. Jerry Falwell. Okay, uh, uh, but I, one of those guys has a, a, a Liberty Broadcasting. I, I can't remember. I thought it was Jerry Farwell. So yes. No. Uh, I don't know why. Just... Oh, no, Liberty was Jerry Falwell. Hmm. Uh, and then he got control of PTL when Jim Baker got in all his trouble. Uh, okay. A lot of people don't realize that that whole thing with Jim Baker was uh, really... It was really a, a grab for a satellite. Uh, what happened was Jim Baker was a very smart guy, and he saw the future of Christian broadcasting and of raising money on television by using satellites to send all these shows to various stations. And so he bought a satellite transponder, which in those days, believe it or not, weren't that expensive. They were like giving Gene them away, Scott. practically. Gene Scott did that, too. Yeah. And he had this transponder, and all of a sudden, it started being worth something. And all of these other guys, like Falwell and uh, what was his name? Jerry Lee Lewis's uh, cousin. Uh, um, uh, he, 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 they all wanted this, so they descended upon him when he got into trouble. And they, a lot of people think they actually started the rumors that started the trouble. Didn't and sell, well, you let uh, me finish the story. Yeah. And and they because I, I I'm intimately aware of this whole this whole story, 
they worked to undo him so they could get control of the satellite transponder. That was mm. basically it. And, uh, 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 it, you know, uh, he actually was pretty much a good guy in that, you know, he said, send me your money and I'm going to start an amusement park for Christians. And he did that. He built it. But he sold 130% of it. No, no, 130% of the timeshares. Yeah. Of the timeshares. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, but uh, it, 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 nevertheless, the fact of the matter was, he was the least crook of them all. Oh, oh Swaggart yeah, was the other guy. Swaggart yeah. and, and Swaggart, uh, Falwell yes. teamed up together. And Falwell told Baker, look, turn the PTL over to me. And then I will hold on to it. And then when you get out of this whole mess... I'll give it back to you. Guess what? <laughs> he never gave it back to him. You know. So, uh, is there a Liberty Broadcasting that has something to do with one of these Christian guys? I couldn't find one. I Googled it. Yeah? Yeah. So. I, seem, I seem to remember, but it's just, uh, you know. Well, I went to work for... Was it? I went to work... Well, he made a lot of money off of that. And then he and a guy by the name of Todd Stores were friends, and they were in a bar one night. Uh, they, yeah, they were, in a, they were. No, they were in a diner, and uh, there was the uh, waitress, and she would go over to the jukebox and keep plugging it with with nickels, which was what it cost to use a jukebox in those days, and kept playing the same three or four songs over and over and over again, and they wondered why she was doing this, and she said, "Well, because those are the four songs I really like," and they both looked at each other and they said. What about a radio station that plays only 40 records over and over and over again? And they went back to their radio stations. Uh, McClendon had his stations and was doing things with them. And stores went back to his. And they both started Top 40. Top That's 40. how Top 40 was invented by a diner and a, and a waitress who was playing the same song over and over again. I bet she didn't get any creative props for that no because uh, and she should and she shouldn't have they they, they should get the props <laughs> for having seen the worthiness of doing that because she wanted to hear the same four songs or five songs over and over again so you know, her creativity no it wasn't her creativity because she wasn't yeah. being creative she was only serving her own particular needs they were the ones right. that were creative enough to see that if they did that that's what people would want right why do you always have to turn everything, Renee, into the woman got screwed? Woman. She didn't get screwed. She just got to play her records over and over again. Uh, Liberty Broadcasting Network, Lynchburg, Virginia. Uh, uh, I, I think it belongs to ChristianVolunteering.org. Oh, okay. Uh, and they also mentioned that Gordon McClendon uh, created Liberty Broadcasting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, there's uh, ChristianBroadcasting.org. But uh, well, I work. I work for. I work for Gordon in Houston, Texas, at KILT. Kilt, get it? He was Scottish. It was called Kilt. Get it? Get it? And, and the one in Dallas he owned was called Cliff. And um, uh, uh, he was the guy. He was maybe the most influential guy in the business. You know what formats he invented? Top forty. Good music. All news. <clears throat> How about that for a trifecta? Huh? He invented those formats. That's impressive. Yeah. All news awesome. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and he hired me. <laughs> you know. Now, there's all news and there's talk. Uh, oh. is, there, is there a difference? Or they yeah, there is, there is a difference. Yeah. He didn't start CNN, talk. My news is usually all news, boom, 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 boom. Talk. And then talk. Talk, a talk is a format. wasn't really a format in the beginning. Occasionally, you would have a talk show. You know, news you'd have talk. A, yeah. you'd, no, you'd have a music station, and some guy would do a talk show at night, like Barry Gray did here in New York at WMCA. Think, when Terrell yeah. Matheny, he but took it half before. Talk. Before, well, that's when I came in. Right. That's when I was brought in. But it was a music station, and then at, at ten o'clock every night or eleven right. o'clock every night, Barry Gray would come on. And do two hours uh, of of interviewing, so yeah. it, it, talk shows were usually on music stations or stations that did other things the rest of the day. Sometimes a station like WOR 
had uh, just one-hour shows all day long, one after the other. And some of them were mm -hmm. talk shows, and some of them were... There was this couple in the morning who used the to Dolans. have breakfast, the Dolans. <laughs> well, there was also the uh, the, Fit, the Fitzpatrick. The Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick. Fitzsimmons Fitz or Fitzpatrick? Something like that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they're often parodying movies like Woody Allen's Radio Days and so on. And they used to do uh, a, a morning show for a couple of hours as they sat around the... the breakfast table saying how last night they went out with Larry Hart and went to see his newest Broadway show and it was wonderful you know and it was grand it was grand it was terrific yes uh, Jeff I always remember in New York there were the two all news stations winds and uh, and and WCBS yeah and they were on all 24 hours and basically the same stuff. Yeah, I don't know mm -hmm. why you how two I news how operations yeah can compete against each other. It's pretty much the same programming. You know. Yeah, you had your favorites though. I was always a CBS person. I liked CB yeah. WCBS. Was, uh, Chip has his hand up. Yes, Chip. There was a Michael Jackson, not the singer. Though that was yeah. uh, Michael Jackson he, was right in wing. L.A. In L.A. He started. Yeah. He was in right. San Francisco in the beginning as a jock, mm -hmm. and yep. then he went to L.A. to WABC, KABC, KABC, yep. and uh, was there for years. He was British, and he did yes. a talk show. Was uh, he right? And then, of course, Larry King did it for years. You after know, in, that in those it. days, you didn't really ask whether somebody was right wing or left wing. In talk yeah. radio, it didn't. It wasn't. It wasn't a consideration. You did a talk show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and um, uh, you know, I mean, even a guy like Joe Pine, who was out of L.A., uh, wasn't really left or right. He was just mean. <laughs> he was just uh, mean. Uh, guy that smoked cigarettes like it was going out of style. And he Morton was, Downey. Well, that was Morton Downey. I, 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 I knew Morton. Morton. I knew I, 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 uh, an actress uh, and, a, and a pretty one. I forgot her name. Who? Uh, what? Morton Downey Jr.'s daughter is. Uh, I have no idea. Rebecca De Mornay. Uh, uh, that was. That wasn't. No, that wasn't him. Morton. That was. There was another kooky guy like Downey. No, Mor Re 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 Rebecca Mornay's father was an L.A. right-wing talk show host, and I'm trying right, to remember yeah. his name now. With it wasn't, a real calm over. wasn't Morton okay. Downey Jr. Oh, okay. But um, he also smoked cigarettes. Uh, George is uh, something George. George. George uh, oh, God, you're right. George. Oh. Yeah, something George. No, George was his first name. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. All right. Man, no, maybe, maybe it was his last name. Yeah. yeah I really? think his last name was George. Yeah. I, I can't remember his first George? name. Yeah. But he smoked cigarettes like a fiend. And uh, he was kind of like a Joe Pine, you know. Mm. Yeah. Uh, well, Morton Downey Jr. was. I like. I like Morty. Uh, we, yeah, he's we, crazy. He used to come do my shot. show every now and then. He's he still was... smoke and get excited and shut up. Well, yeah. and, and, yeah, it, 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 I still the greatest moment on that show is when uh, Al Sharpton was cold cocked by oh, uh, yeah. the head of the. What was <laughs> it? What was, <laughs> what, 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 was, what was the guy's name? I'm trying to remember his name. Uh, it, he got sued, didn't he? Like, no, he did get no. punched. He <laughs> sucker punched the fuck out of out of out of Sharpton. And, 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 and those days, Sharpton was really fat, so he rolled yeah, around a little bit. Pounder. He had a hard time getting up. Uh, Roy Innes, Sharpton Roy Innes, I think was the it was the guy yeah, that cold cocked right. him. Yeah, Wally George is the guy who was Wally Rebecca George, Dornay's father. Right, Polly Good. George, Wally. Wally. Oh, Wally George, that's it. Yeah, Wally George. Mm -hmm. uh, now, was he out in New York or L.A.? He's out Southern of L.A. California. Southern California. Yeah. Uh, do other people remember him? He called himself the father of combat TV. Yeah. Isn't the Wall Street Journal? Remember, Geraldo had the TV show, too. I think he had hit with a chair one time. Yeah, yeah. No, he was trying he to open his nose. Or something. I yeah, I remember that. My mother used to watch that. Geraldo got hit with something. What's happened with Geraldo? We haven't we haven't heard like, from oh God, we haven't I heard from Geraldo in a while. Yeah, what's going on? I mean, when Geraldo was on Twenty Twenty, I mean, he changed the dynamics of mental uh, sanitariums. <laughs> well, you know something. I'm going to tell you a story about that. I know the person that was running the desk, uh, the assignment desk at Channel 7. 
And he tells the Geraldo, listen, we got a story out at uh, Willowbrook, which is a, a, a insane asylum. What was it? It was a mental hospital. Yeah, a mental hospital. And, and we think there's a story on what the conditions are like out there. And he didn't want to do it. <laughs> he said, well, I don't want to do that. I want to do this other story. I don't want to go out to some mental hospital. And he went anyway, and it, that's what made him his name, was because he reported on that story. But he didn't find the story. The story was dropped in his fucking lap by somebody who had already developed the story. <clears throat> so, you know, but uh, 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 Geraldo always hated me. So much so that I got more publicity out of Geraldo Rivera than any other human being in America. <laughs> I Bec remember that. Yes, yeah. because you could be watching Larry King, and the question would always come up, wasn't your name Larry Rivers? Or didn't you use the name Larry Rivers? <laughs> oh, yeah. And he would say, no, that's a rumor started by a shock jock named Alex Bennett. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and I'd be I'd be watching Larry King and there's Geraldo Rivera mentioning my name and he would do it everywhere all the time yeah. and the fact of the matter was he did use the name Larry Rivers he his name was Geraldo Rivera okay but he used the name Larry Rivers when he was trying to break into broadcasting right because Jerry uh, yeah Jerry Rivers yeah. so um he um uh, it, it, the, it, Channel 7 suddenly got this idea of becoming very ethnic on the air because New York is an ethnic city. So they got themselves a black reporter and they got themselves a woman. You know, this is how they put themselves on the map as a news operation. And then they saw this Hispanic guy and they said, what's your name? And he said, Larry Rivers. And they said, well, what's your real name? And they, he said, Geraldo Rivera. They said, that's the name you're going to use. So, so, you know, he did use the name Larry Rivers professionally. And uh, he always gave me a bad time about it. And eventually we met up and we shook hands and we said, uh, I, I didn't say I was sorry, but he said, uh, you know, let bygones be bygones, you know. And I went, okay, see you later, Larry. Uh, <laughs> <having> funny, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, uh, but he just, for years, just hated the fuck out of me. And, but as a result, gave me more publicity than any other single human being ever did. You always get the most. Yeah. Now, he's a Jewish Puerto Rican, right? Huh? He's a Jewish Puerto Rican. He had a, a, I think he had a, um, I don't know if he was Puerto Rican or what the, yeah. what the Hispanic derivation was, but I think his mother was Jewish. He's not a Mexican. So yeah. if he, if his mother's Jewish, then he's Jewish. That's right. Yeah. You know, because, uh, see, there's one place women have it good, Renee. If you're a Jewish woman and you give birth to a child, that child is Jewish because it goes through the mother's side, not the father's side. That means it's cursed. <laughs> there's, there's not much I know about the Jewish religion, but if I remember correctly, it wasn't the always through the woman. It was originally through the man. No, no. I, so. I never heard that. Never heard that. Really? No, a no. Gentile Goya. <laughs> no, what, what, the, 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 it always went through the She's mother's a line. A the mother's line was the line. Uh, uh, there. I, see, I thought at the very beginning. Now, on the other hand, in the Orthodox temples, you had to sit upstairs, okay? If you're yeah. a woman. You were yeah, segregated, separate. but. Uh, hey, that's because they got a better view from up there. See, they had a good there, too. And nobody could look up their dresses. <laughs> Anyway, because that's what we got a church for or synagogue yeah. for, right? Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, uh, we got this whole thing with Harvey Weinstein. You yeah, know, what the hell is that? Uh, well, I'm, it, 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 this is driving liberals crazy. OK, because obviously, liberal. obviously what he did was yeah. not considered proper. All right. On the other hand. He was one of the biggest contributors to liberal causes, to liberal candidates. I mean, he gave away hundreds upon hundreds of thousands of dollars to campaigns over the Schumer years. Schumer and uh, Elizabeth Warren both gave back the money that he gave them this year. Uh, uh, you know, I, I think that that's silly. And they donated it to women's uh, causes or something. See, but I find I that, you see, number one, uh, Weinstein didn't make the money he gave them. Because he was whoring these women out or anything. You know, he wasn't making money off these women uh, uh, any more than he was making money off men as well, you know, who worked for him. Uh, I think that's silly. 
I don't think they should feel guilty about having taken the money. Uh, and, uh, you, you know, you got to look at a guy like Weinstein, and he, he's an, and I, I, would, I would never think of being like he was, okay? But nevertheless, he grew up in a culture where that was kind of, especially in Hollywood, the modus operandi. And yeah. uh, now, but he didn't stop when he learned that it was wrong. That was the problem. <laughs> he says he can't. He says yeah. he's trying. He it's it's a process. Break, though, it's a process does, not to not to embarrass women by coming onto them when you're a fat fuck. Well, this is what yeah. he says. He says I grew up in a time when these things were acceptable, and I realize that they're wrong. Please cut me slack. I've been working on it. I'm working hard at it. And this is a kind of wacky. <laughs> You know, I mean, that's wacky to even try to say it that well, way. Well, I, I think that you have to give him some slack on the early part of his life. The fact that he paid off women as far back, as little ago, rather, as I think 2015. Uh, there Me was eight suits or eight women that he paid off. Yeah, and and the last one was something like 2015, which does means anybody really you can't blame it on the, on the times he grew up in. You know? Yeah. Th does anybody really think that conservatives hold the uh, the patent on on you know sexism? But, but, but what, I mean, what's, what's driving the really liberals does. nuts about this is they <laughs> love Harvey but, Weinstein politically. Yeah. Yeah. You know he's like an icon among liberals. Yes, uh, uh, Renee. Phil, I can't stand Bill Clinton. So just he just he makes my skin crawl as as much as t Trump does. So. Please, a pervert is a pervert. But no, but, you, you know, I mean, but, you, but you're calling it a pervert. Call like, it for instance, uh, 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 let, me, let, me, let me argue with you on something, Renee. Uh, sure. uh, let's take the uh, Monica Lewinsky situation. Uh, the only time she ever became a, uh, what can we call it, uh, an abused woman was when the press started abusing her because of what she had done. You know, right. otherwise, if that had never come to light, she would have just had a, an affair with Bill Clinton, and that would have been it. You would have she she oh, was a willing participant in that situation. Oh, in absolutely. fact, in fact, she probably initiated it. And like most guys, if a woman comes on to you, you don't say no. Didn't you? So what? It was so women. So women. So so what did he do? Yeah, Jennifer Flowers. I interviewed right. Jennifer Flowers. And throughout the entire interview, and I remember it, she kept saying to me over and over again, uh, hey, um, uh, I, uh, 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 you know, I hope you believe me. I hope you believe me. You know, I really did uh, have sex with Bill Clinton. You know, I really did have a relationship ongoing mm -hmm. for years with Bill Clinton. And uh, I said to her, I believe you. You know, I don't think you're lying. I, I don't doubt you for a moment. Um, she, I said, but I do have one question to ask you, and this is the important one. I said, did he treat you right? And she said, he was an absolute gentleman. He said, she said, every time we'd ever get together and have sex, the next day he would call and see if I was okay and if there was anything I needed. He said he was always a very attentive person to me. And I said, then in my, in that, in that reason and that reason alone, he's okay in my book. The, which you know. one was the person that actually sued well, him? What, or, well, wait a minute. Uh, Let me before you say that, uh, 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 Renee. What do you think about that? But Jennifer Flowers said he was an okay guy. You know that he just the, just the <clears throat> fact that you, you can name that there's a, a line of them is is the issue. I mean, and then Phil's the next words out of Phil's mouth is which one was that? And that's exactly his well. Life. No, wait a minute. He it, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, th there, there were there were only about five that maybe four I think that Trump produced. Okay, and it's questionable oh, whether a couple of those ever had a relationship with Bill Clinton. We know that Jennifer Flowers did. We know that uh, what was that one with the ugly nose? Uh, uh, yeah. You know yeah, that Paula she, Jones. Paula Jones, you're laughing. Look, look at Patrick hasn't said a word all night, <laughs> but he, he was giving it the the <laughs> high <laughs> fists to himself here. Uh, Paula Jones, we know about Paula Jones, uh, but you know, uh, and but when you talk to somebody like Jennifer Flowers, and she says, "Yeah, hey, he's treated me just fine." You know, he was a real gentleman. She'd had a relationship with him for a couple of years. Yes, J Jason. What's another one that was well, but Renee, you know, you're looking at your Puritan views, and you know, 
to, to be honest, you know, who are you to say what kind of relationship that Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton are allowed to have? You know, maybe maybe they had an open sure. relationship where they were allowed to I do to what they do. I smell smoke outside of them. Oh, okay. okay. All right. All right, Tony. We go. I hope you're happy. Don't inhale. Right, I well, <laughs> that I don't like what I've seen from Bill Clinton since I've been seeing Bill Clinton. And it, I have oh, you no seen him too? Pardon? <laughs> you were seeing him too? Do you have a blue dress also? If Hillary wants to stay with him, that's fine. If all of those women want to fuck him, that's fine too. That's but, their but maybe choice. that's how the relationship is. Maybe they were good with it. Maybe they, they you know, maybe that's how they are. You know, that's you fine. can't judge. I'm saying that he's a little more slimy than I would like to be close to. He gives what? me as the, oh, as the well, look. Uh, he gives me he, he gives me the creeps lately, you know. See, when because governor, huh? When he was the governor of Arkansas, the ch then the chp the Highway Patrol of Arkansas said that he yeah. used to send them to go get him women uh, and that he would have liaisons with. As, yeah, and where did you hear this? Uh, no, no, I, when he was running, I, are you sure that this is true, or is this uh, uh, are these unimpeachable sources? Yeah, Russian planted stories. Yeah. Yeah. No, these are so far. No, these stories. Fake news. At, at, the, at the time he was running against, uh, who did he beat? Bush. Uh, so it, it was at that time. And uh, I guess a number of these uh, highway patrol officers came forward and uh, and said that he, uh, you know, would use them to go get his uh, liaisons. And. Uh, and He's find just, women for him. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't. He, he, I don't believe it. Uh, I think a lot of that came out because of the politics of the time and the fact that some people were trying to win an election, and uh, these people came forward with lies, basically. No, he's just not my cup of tea. Well, no, I, I look. I I don't disagree with you, uh, uh, Renee, because I find him somewhat off-putting myself. You know, but. Uh, you know, Do you think his way of being uh, folksy is genuine or it's an act? Uh, you know, the way he gets down with the people, you know. Uh, he's just good at it. Yeah. You know, I think it's just a talent that he has. Yeah. Oh. I don't that. During the debates against Bush 1, uh, he actually uh, walked into the crowd with the microphone and started, you know, talking to them. And that's kind of what endeared him uh, to, to the people. Right. Uh, is that you know he got right there he left the podium and went right down into the crowd and i guess that was the, that was the end for uh, george herbert walker bush you know? yeah but yeah. pretty good sax too yeah well, yeah, yeah. No, and yeah that's and i like that yes so, okay. uh, jeff jeff yeah well we should also rem we should remember that that we had a third candidate at that time oh yeah bro <laughs> For Perot, and uh, I think Perot took Bush's uh, percentages away. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think yeah. he took nineteen percent, uh, or something close to that, because yeah. he was to get the matching funds. Yeah. And he uh, wouldn't have quit. He would have got more. Uh, well, uh, he didn't. He quit, and then he came back uh, the second time. Yeah, but I think that he let his people down be honest with you. I think Perot is a phony, uh, and I think he let his people down because, I mean, a lot of people believed in him. And a lot of people I were, think, you know... Yeah. Uh, you, uh, don't, you don't think that George Herbert Walker Bush, head of the CIA, vice president of the United States, was capable of putting pressure on Perot to get out? No. Really? No. Uh, you know, because Perot said that uh, he, you know, he was getting, uh, uh, it was something to do with his daughter and a wedding. And uh, listen, listen, listen. His daughter a lesbian? Uh, no, she was getting married. I don't know if she was marrying a woman or a man, though. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, to begin with, uh, uh, Perot was in that case. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, 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 Patrick's got his hand up for the first time tonight. No, remember, um, Perot had enough money and he was basically funding himself that yeah it, it was in it was in the same vein of what trump did that right. he just jumped in and he didn't give a shit and mm -hmm. nobody was gonna change his mind so no i don't think 
uh, Bush could have done anything legally. I mean, yeah, if he would have put a he, hit he, up. I think it was underhanded. But no, I I don't think I don't even think that would have um, would have swayed him. I don't think you can put Perot and Trump in the same category. Perot. Really? Perot had Perot had a plan, and he well, recognized both wax. what was going on economically, and people made fun of him for his charts. But yeah. he, was, you know, he was right. So, yeah, well, he was right. Look, look at NAFTA. You know, he was the first one to predict what was going to happen with NAFTA. You know, right. Perot was actually a good businessman, and, and I'm a big lefty. I don't think we need a businessman in charge of America because America is not a business. But I did like Perot. You know, yeah. even looking back at him, I still like Perot. I it, voted. It yeah. wasn't NAFTA though that the sucking sound comes from. It, it's the free trade with China and well, Middle and Southeast Asia. No, but the, at the time it was going to be free trade with Mexico, and that that yeah. it, it would have been a big sucking sound for Mexico if the China thing didn't open up like as I, soon I, as Mexico. I, did. I wonder in that election who Trump voted for. I bet it was Clinton. Now, I probably he probably didn't vote. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, he probably didn't care about. What voting. year was that? Wouldn't surprise me. Uh, Eighty. Ninety-two. So it was it ninety-two. Yeah. Studio Fifty Four still open at that time? I don't think so. No, no. He must have been getting his cups somewhere else. Uh, when I try to get into Studio 54, which I was unable to do, it was in the 70s. <laughs> no, no, you know, I, you I was offered the ability to go down there any number of times, yeah. and I, I never went. Never I was went. Wearing a Wasn't interested suit. in the least in going there. I, I was the wearing Copa, a was that, the Copa was open, wasn't it? Yeah. I went to New York, New York, but I, I was wearing a three-piece suit. I was with a very beautiful girl. But the guy looked at me with the three-piece suit, and he wasn't letting me in. Yeah. You know? It was a three-piece suit. Uh, Chip, yeah. what, what did you say about, about the Copa? Uh, the, when did that close? That was still open. That was, you're talking about the Copacabana. Yes. Yeah. Yes, the uh, Copa. The, I can't the remember Copa when it closed. Down. That, that, was a, you know, that was a mob operation. You know that. Didn't Ricardo where all the, work there? What? Ricky Ricardo worked there. No, that was the Tropicana. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, I'll tell you who. Who I, I years ago we did a, a a shoot at the Copacabana with a bunch of what at that time were called cross dressers, um, transvestites. I think was another yeah. term used today. We'd call them transsexuals, and uh, they were all dressed up beautifully, and some of them were quite gorgeous. And my friend Anne, who took photographs that I own half of, although that thing is. Have you seen them? Yeah, it's become a legal quagmire. Uh, I think somebody's trying to steal from us. I have no idea. But anyway, uh, uh, she took a picture, and it's the one picture that I have. Uh, I and this other guy split the, the are splitting the pictures up into those things that I did with Midnight Blue and then the other stuff. And then like halfway in the middle, we kind of split it for personal ownership. And so I own this photograph, and it's a photograph of this transvestite, this transsexual, this performer at the Copacabana, and it's Harvey Firestein. And I show people that picture, and I go, who is that? And nobody can tell you. Nobody. Oh, come on. Let's see. No. All right. Put it up. I don't don't have the picture here. I don't have the picture here. Tease. (laughs) <laughs> uh, but uh, no, Harvey Firestein, and he uh, he looked gorgeous. You know, I remember he's wearing a black outfit, and you know he wasn't heavy at the time, and he was a, he was a good-looking guy, you know, or a good-looking woman, or whatever he. How had was to his be. voice? I don't remember. I did. We didn't. Uh, we we just interviewed them. I don't think we ever did them. You know, showed them performing. Uh, but uh, it was, you know, because she years later she showed me the picture. She says, "You know who that is?" And I said, "No." He said, "Harvey Firestein." I said, "That was Harvey Firestein." She said, "Yeah, yeah." So you know, um, that was That's the right. Copacabana. That was my involvement with the Copacabana. Uh, the other involvement, the most interesting involvement, is we, we Midnight Blue was taken off the air by Time Warner. We wow. for, we forced ourselves back on the air. Uh, and said, they said, well, you can't do sex. So we well, slowly but surely came back, and we slowly but surely started doing sex again. But you can't call it Midnight Blue, so we called it uh, 
uh, what do we call it? Something else blue. I can't remember the first name we gave it. And then after mm -hmm. a couple of months, it turned into uh, something else. And eventually we came back to Midnight Blue. But the first show we ever did, in order to go out and do a straight story, we did a 12-year-old um, uh, evangelist, um, faith healer, 12 years old. And we went down, came down to Harlem to the Avalon Ballroom. And we shoot, shot this kid doing his faith healing with all these, you know, it was a white kid fleecing the black community. And uh, all of a sudden I realized the room we were in was the room that Malcolm X got killed in. Killed. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that kind of, uh -huh. I was in awe of that. Isn't it up to Harlem? Isn't Harlem uptown? Well, no, not to me. <laughs> 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 what are you in the Bronx? No, I'm I'm home. I'm home. <laughs> yeah, I know. You know, uh, was it uh, Seinfeld had this whole routine he did on that latest show that was an old bit of his, the first bit he ever made, did, and he said, "How come you uh, you're in Manhattan but you go out to the island?" Yeah, you live on Long Island. You don't live in Long Island. Yeah, you don't live in Long Island. That's but true. You live in, in New York City. You live in Brooklyn. And, you live and in Manhattan, if you're going, but you and, live and, on and if, Long you, if you're going uh, out of uh, Long Island, you're going to the city. Yeah. To get in a cab, you don't get <clears throat> on a cab, but you do get on a subway. Yeah. <laughs> and he goes on and on like yeah. that, and he's right. You know. And you. And you go to the Bronx. Well, you know why you go to the yeah. Bronx? You know why it's the Bronx? It's because it was named after a family called the Bronx family. So it was oh, called the Bronx. Like, it's not the Queens. It's it was, not the Brooklyn. I th what? I thought it was the Bronx. Well, the, the, yeah, that, that too, you know. But anyway, so, you know. Um, so uh, On uh, Facebook today, uh, I saw somebody sent a... Um, a clip from uh, Bronx Tale, mm -hmm. and it was the clip where uh, these bikers go into the bar, oh, yeah. and uh, then uh, what's his name? Uh, they 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 start causing trouble, and he locks the door, and he says, "I asked you to leave, now you can't leave." Yeah. <laughs> that's a great movie. <laughs> yeah, uh, what a what a wonderful. You know, I've never really watched that film. No, uh, yeah, tons no. of times uh, for me. Oh, I've seen it many, many times. It was, it was directed by De Niro, right? And it was... Uh, and Chaz. Yes. And Chaz, Chaz Palm, Palm and Terry, Terry wrote it. Wrote it. Yeah. yeah. But De yeah, Niro... The only movie De I've seen more than that is Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. You know, I've never, seen that, all the, I've never seen that all the way through. Really? Well, it, 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 takes a, it takes a special... You've got to get used to it. You've got to understand... Yeah, you hate so Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. I... I you know, I mean, there's certain movies that, for some reason, I just never got into. And I've tried to start. I've started doing Gary Glenn Ross, and then I never got all the way through it. I've yeah, and never when you seen, look at who's in it, never you're seen a Bronx Jack Tale. Lemon, and uh, you yeah, know, I know uh, I realize that, but that doesn't mean a thing to me. You know, uh, it just yeah. it, it's whether it grabs me while I'm watching, and it doesn't grab me. It's like Death you, of a Salesman. You know why? You know why I think you like it is because you're a salesman. That's and it's about sales. Yeah, yeah. It's about sales. You can probably relate to it. Yeah, yeah. coffee's for closers. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he says. Yeah. yeah. Look, you, do you ever try any of that? Is it true? Or? What? Would you fire somebody if they can't close right away? Or? <clears throat> no, I try to teach them that closing is just a matter of doing your job and the, and the close is automatic. If you've done everything the right way by being interested in the person's needs uh, and they're really a qualified customer for what you sell, the, you don't have to do And anything. also, you, if you're not selling something that's bogus, yeah, there's not a lot of selling you have to do if you've got a good, decent product that people want. You've yeah. got to ask questions that make them aware of their needs yeah. to the point that their, uh, their desire to own it is greater than the price. Jason. Just speaking of selling something that's bogus, did you ever watch that show? I think it was called White Gold. No. It was about uh, uh, replacement windows. I think it was on was White Gold. Was that uh, Sabrina? Well, she just walked in, but I think it was on Netflix. But it, it was cool. It was a good show. It's like these guys who are selling replacement windows and just talking about the uh, 
price on uh, vinyl windows and everything, but it was a pretty good it's show. The Vito one uh, with the uh, with the siding. Remember, what was the Danny the Tin Man? Tin Man, yeah, right. Wasn't that about cars though? That was about car sales. No, it was about selling uh, 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 vinyl siding or something uh, on uh, on houses. But he had a Cadillac or something, and that was you know. You ever you, 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 ever, you ever you ever see a movie that you really like? You know that you really love, yeah. and then you don't see it for years, and then you go back and watch it, and it sucks. Have you ever had that happen? <laughs> Uh, I can't they, say they I have. Some I don't stand the test of time, you know. Uh, I I can't think of any right now, but you know there are some that just don't stand the test of time. There was a, there was a film by John Frankenheimer called Seconds. Mm. That when I came out, I loved that film. And uh, about a couple of months ago, I had I said I got a copy of it, and I said to to girlfriend, you got to see this film, and we watched it. And she said, this film sucks. And as I was watching it, I go, yeah, this film does suck. You're right. How about Jaws? You, you know what I'm, do you know oh, the film? Yeah. I'm, wait a minute, Jeff, you know the film I'm talking about? No, not at all. But I, I, I've i had those feelings. I can't think of uh, what might be the uh, appropriate like one. Like it was but, good at the moment that you watched right. it. But sure as time went on, things eclipsed it. Yeah. Uh, in this case, it's a, it's a movie with Rock Hudson, believe it or not. And it's, it's called Seconds because it's about a company that takes guys who are getting old and who want to start life over again. And they give them a whole bunch of, they completely redo their face and do their fingerprints and redo their whole body. And then they <coughs> send them out somewhere and they can go live another life. Sounds good. You know, yeah. it's, it's, and that's why it's called Seconds. It's not yeah. because of time. It's yes. Seconds, like Second Helping. And Is it somewhat of an, uh, an artificial where you got uh, younger again? Well, they because they would do a lot of tightening of the skin. They would do. Yes, you know, I, they, I, they, I, and, I guess I remember. And they but... would make you work out and so on. So this guy who is played by John Randolph, who if you ever saw him, he was on a lot of TV shows, was kind of the ultimate kind of almost grandfather. All right, uh, goes to this company, and after they do all the work on him, he comes out as Rock Hudson. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and Brock Hudson was a little older when he made this picture, so it wasn't that outlandish. So he became uh, gay? Yes, he became gay. And <laughs> and so the whole movie is, you know, it, it, it and it, it basically, I think you could remake that movie today and make a very good movie. But by today's standards, this film was done by Frankenheimer, who was basically a TV director who had some good fortune in a few films that he did. Uh, didn't he do... Uh, he did, um, oh, God, what, did, what else did he do? I'm trying to remember now. Uh, Brian, I can't take you on. I can't, I can't. Uh, I, you can't wait. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, six. if I do more, I'm going to have to move the screen I, out, and I can't do that. I I'm going to go to bed, so uh, you, you're going to go to bed. you can oh. have him join. Okay, thank you so much, sure. Chip. Will you call again, please? Yeah. Please, yes. call again. I will. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Hey, Jaws, uh, me... uh, Jaws is a movie that, when I first saw it, it was scary. Now you can see the mechanical shark and it's, uh, well, and also the colors. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's not the same movie that it was when it came out. Well, Jaws... Well, you, you know the answer. That's what yeah. I mean. yeah. Well, yeah. 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 If you go down to Universal Studios, you feel the set and everything. Yeah. Oh, you, Brian. What, 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 wait, man, what's that noise? Is that you, yeah. Brian? Oh, you got to mute. There's yeah. a truck in the back there. <laughs> you get to hear the ride, too. Yeah. Uh, anyway, go ahead. What were you saying? Trying to think of what, what were you saying? Uh, somebody was saying something here. I was talking about God. Yeah, the animatronic shark. They called him, if I'm not mistaken, they called the animatronic shark that they used in all four of the films, Bruce. Yeah. Really? They, they, yes, they did. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember what films it was that John Frankenheimer did. And he, well, he did the, he did, uh, let's see here. Uh, he did, uh, he, well, he, he actually did some very great films. Uh, this guy that did Seconds. He did, one of my favorite films, The Manchurian Candidate, Second Days yes. in May. And in that period of time, he did Seconds. He did uh, Grand Prix. He did 
Um, uh, where was it? Uh, wow, Grand Prix, that brings up a... Yeah, uh, Black Sunday, French Connection 2, because... It, yeah, so, I mean, he, you know, he, he did a lot, of, uh, a lot of great pictures, and in the midst of this, he did this one movie that I love called Seconds, but then when I go back at it now and look at it, it sucks. So yeah. the same, I, there was another one for me called Vanishing Point, and it had this guy driving the uh, the uh, the, Do the Dodge, whatever it was, and and at the end he ends up uh, hitting the thing. Uh, that one was pretty exciting when I was in high school. Does anybody remember yeah. that one? William Friedkin, who did uh, who did The Exorcist. Oh, that was good. Movie. His follow up film was a remake of a. Film that was French called Wages of Fear, and he called it. Um, uh, what did he call it? Uh, he gave it a spooky name. And what it is, it's about guys having being paid a lot of money to drive. Um, what, what's in TNT? What is the mixture? Uh, uh, oh, it's uh, uh, dynamite. No, glycerin. Not glycerin. Uh, it's uh, whatever it's called. But they're yeah. supposed to drive it across the jungle. And, uh, you know, at any time, if they hit a bump that's too hard, the whole thing could oh. blow up on them. And uh, Nitro oh, oh, the film was called Sorcerer. Oh. And it was considered a bomb, an absolute bomb. And he was coming off The Exorcist. Usually you come off something like The Exorcist, you can do no wrong. Uh, and I happen to think it wasn't a bad film. But if you want to go see the uh, really good version of that film, go see the old black and white French film, Wages of Fear. You know, so. yeah. This vanishing point was 1971. It was Barry Newman, Cleavon Little, uh, but um, you know, kids liked it. But uh, now, that you, if you see it again, uh, it certainly doesn't hold the same uh, uh, the same thing for you. You know, it's not. You know, Night of the Living Dead. Though, uh, Night of the Living Dead became a cult movie, and that uh, that sort of uh, transcends. Well, it became a, a cult movie because it was bad. Yeah. You know, I felt that way about Serpico, trying to oh, watch it after all. I loved it, too. Yeah. But watching Serpico it, like, goes. you know, within the last five years, I said, oh, I'm going to watch Serpico again. Yeah. It, it was. It just seemed so dated, and it just... You know I something? Know. i got to tell you something, though. The problem... The problem, like the, problem like the, look the problem, though, is Al Pacino. Al Pacino, back in the day, was actually a terrible actor. Really? Oh, like he, was, he was just... He was just chewing the scenery. Oh, yeah. he I mean, wh what can you say about an actor if you're going to do an impression of him? You go, hoo wah! You Hoo know, I mean, <laughs> he's the same in every movie. Not now. Not now. I mean, you know, he's done some stuff for HBO and stuff where he's done pretty good. You know, he, did, he played Phil Spector for crying out loud. Which one did he play the devil in? Uh, oh, the devil's, devil's advocate. advocate. Yeah. So that, that was Jeffrey Jones. Uh, Craig T. Nelson, coach. And um, now, I, I'm not mixing him up. That he was he in the scent of a woman. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's why he said who what. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> every one of his movies, like back in the day, he always used to have like a part of the movie where he would just go like crazy for like ten minutes. But here it is, it's coming. <laughs> As like, years have gone on, he's actually become a very good actor. But I always thought he was a terrible actor. I couldn't stand going to Al Pacino movies. Really? So you want? Hey, Alex, you gonna see the new Blade Runner? I was gonna ask you. Yeah, that. I'm seeing it tomorrow. Oh, tell me how you like it. I'm excited. It's gonna be. I heard. It's no, I'm not gonna tell you how I liked it. How's that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna keep my mouth shut about it. I'm not gonna. T I'm gonna you tell. Contrary, I'm gonna. I'm gonna, gonna tell. Alex. I'm gonna after the, uh, after I see it tomorrow. I'm gonna call each of the people that are on the show tonight, oh, except I'm you, I'm and tell them what I thought of it. I can't uh, wait. Excited for it. Yes. Yes, Renee. Is I know number two. Why does it have to be Ryan Gosling? Why not? Why couldn't it have been a gazillion other? Well, but why not characters? Ryan Gosling? He needed to work. You know. Yeah. He needed, well, wait. He just came off of whatever that Moon Dance La La thing Land showing. Yeah, La La Land. He's Wasn't popular. there another actor available? I'm sure there were tons of actors available. I think he was probably the most bankable yeah. of them. Yeah, See, I like Gary Oldman better than Pacino. I think Oldman's great. Gary Oldman, yeah. Yeah, but he's, he's a, he, I, I can't stand him because he's a big right winger. Really? Yeah. I, mean, I, know he's public, but I think he's crazy. He's an insane right winger. 
So oh, is James Woods, but I like his acting ability. Yeah. It, it, well, uh, James Woods doesn't act anymore. James Woods He's just like shows up and is James He's Woods. The dice, he doesn't sing either. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh, you know, a movie that did transcend time, I, for at least for me, was Chinatown. Yes. Uh, yes. Cool. It's a very a classically perfect film. Yeah. Yeah. Well, isn't it with like old movies like that, and you watch them the first time, and you're back in that era. Well, you know, and when, then, when you and do... then you watch them, te- you know, ten years, twenty years later, and you go, "Oh shit!" You know, the the effects were crappy and all that. No. But there's some movies that you just accept. The well, fact no, that it's I'll tell you still... what it is with Chinatown. The reason it works to this day is because it isn't dated. Because the time it takes place in isn't yeah. dated. You know, it's it's an old. L.A. And so, in therefore, the first, it becomes a nostalgia piece. You know, to this day, if you want to watch a great movie and probably say, this is still a great movie, go watch Sunset Boulevard, yeah. you know? And there is something about that film that I never get tired of watching. It is, it's a great movie. I like yeah. L.A. Confidential. That's like West Side Story. I like West Side Story. Every time you flip it on, it's still good. I hate West Side Story. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I yeah. love it. Uh, you love it. You love it. Why, why do you love it, uh, Rob? Why do you love it? I don't know. There's just something about the musical West Side Story. I think is awesome. Just always have grew up with it. Yeah, but it's it, 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 that you're it, a jet old always, way. What always bothered me is it was like a white guy writing about singing and dancing Puerto Ricans. <laughs> yeah. hoodlums hoodlums Ga- gangs we got no rhythm you know singing and dancing gangs and i'm going only a white guy could write this you know <laughs> yeah uh, it, it, i don't think i thought about that though back no, in I didn't think of it like that. 60s <laughs> you know they they were talking about the washing machines and even then they said in puerto rico there was no electricity <laughs> you know yeah. So what's Phil's changed? Phil, 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 Phil. Crumpy, Phil. Phil be crumpy. Let's have some crumpy. We got our crumpy right here. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, but I, mean, I, uh, uh, it, 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 it bothered me that, for instance, Natalie Wood wasn't singing. That it was, yeah, Mar- was it was Mar- it was Marnie was Nixon. Marnie yeah. Nixon was the woman who always did a lot of the voices, like he, she did Audrey Hepburn in My Fair Lady. They always went out. She was the go-to woman to do the voice for someone who couldn't sing. And so it bothered me that that Natalie Wood wasn't really singing, and it wasn't, it didn't physically sound like her voice, you know. Um, She would speak, and she'd sound a certain way, and then she'd start singing and sound an entirely different way. And I always felt something was wrong with that. Maybe you were older. I saw it as a kid first time and fell in love with it. too. Now, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll come t- out like 62, 63. I'll tell you, a Natalie mm-hmm. Wood movie. I see Natalie Wood. I loved Natalie Wood. To me, was beautiful. She was my she was my spank bank when I was a kid. Okay. <laughs> I I even masturbated f- f- of uh, uh, about her when I didn't know how to masturbate. Okay. <laughs> anyway, she um uh she made a movie that I just loved because it's a perfect vehicle for her, and it was actually the first. I think the first movie that Robert Redford ever did called uh-huh. Inside Daisy Clover. Does anybody know the picture I'm talking porn? about? I don't know that one. Oh, sounds like a porn. It's about Hollywood and it's about <laughs> them taking this kid who's like a waif, you know, and her mother is crazy and they live in a trailer out by the beach and they find this girl and they turn her into a movie star, you know, like a Shirley Temple. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, it, there's something about that film that I always liked because it was a great vehicle for Natalie Wood to be the sexy Natalie Wood. I mean, it was, it's, a, it's a terrific film. Just a, I always love the film. And it was Robert Redford's first movie. Now, Christopher Plummer, 1965. Yeah, and I think the second movie that Robert Redford was ever in, now, that may have been the second movie. I think that's the first, though. But the second one was This Property is Condemned. And who was his co-star in This Property is Condemned? Which is based on a screen a play by maybe William Inge, if I'm thinking correctly. Um, uh, her, his co-star was Natalie Wood. So they appeared in two films together at the very beginning of Robert Redford's career. So, yeah. Was she in the movie where she was blind? 
Sidney Poitier directed that movie. What? What movie? This property. Did, did, no, I don't it think. Says no. It says, it says that this property is condemned 1966. Director Sidney. Oh, Sidney. I'm sorry. Sidney Pollock. Sydney Pollock. The Pollock? I apologize. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, it's Robert Redford and Natalie Wood, right? Yeah. Yeah. And what and what year was and what year, and what year was Inside Daisy Clover? Sixty-one. So so, so it was five. No, oh, I'm sorry, sixty-five. So it was a year earlier, maybe, or, or the same year as yeah. this property was condemned. Uh, Sixty-six. Yeah, one okay. year later. So, yeah, so yeah. one year earlier. So, yeah. so I'm Inside right. Inside Daisy Did, Clover was 1965. Yeah. Property yeah. is condemned. And he plays a gay actor in Inside Daisy Clover. Daisy Clover falls in love with and then finds out he's gay. Yeah. So, uh, but it, it, it's, a, it's a movie worth seeing if it ever shows up. And it's not one of those ones I'd say I would be depressed in watching on um, a second viewing, you know. Mm. But uh, Robert Blake? Uh, Where is he? Is he dead? Jail. Uh, wasn't he? He's old. He's dead in jail. No, he never went to jail. He never went to jail. His so wife, wasn't it his wife? His oh, no. wife. That's it. it. It was somebody else uh, that shot the chauffeur. Oh, he, yeah, he had someone murdered. That's right. His Who? wife. Robert Blake? Yeah, his wife. Yeah. He had uh, gone back. Something about them coming out of a restaurant. He forgot. They walked out. She got in the car. He said he forgot something in the restaurant, went back inside. And while he was in there, she was killed. Yeah. Yeah. Something. yeah, but he never he never was found never guilty of that. No, he wasn't. But yeah, I could have sworn he he that he got arrested he for something. His gun. Now, now let me ask yeah. you this question: Now that O.J. Simpson is a free man, subject, of course, to probation, uh, do we let him get on with his life, or do we still say, point at him as he walks down the street and go murder? Fuck him. Well, just let him go on with his no. life. But you hear no. what he did? He held he held a sci a private auction or a secret auction, not auction, uh, autograph signing ceremony in Vegas. Yeah, really. And you know that's going to be that's going to be the Goldmans are going to go batshit trying to yeah. get their money. Did yeah, they but say yeah. they weren't going to go after him anymore. No, uh, 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 they're Pat never going to let him go. Patrick. Maybe O.J. is getting uh, advice from Donald Trump. Never listen to your attorneys or people who know what the fuck that they're doing. Just do what you want. Yeah. But he's going to end up getting in trouble, just like with yep. Seth. The Goldmans are going to go after him, or he's going to fuck up again and say something. Yep. And, you know, I know you can't, I know Donald No double jeopardy. You know, he's going to, he's going to fuck up again. And but anyway. Any little violation of parole, he'll be right back. They, they're, yep. they'll you fuck know. him faster than. But the thing that would be back. funny he could say he, then he won't get out. He killed her, and there's nothing they could do. If he moves back to Florida and they even give him a traffic ticket, I think he can go after them because their attorney general or whatever said that he wasn't welcome there. Right. He can't go back there. They don't he want to go back there. Well, I think he has to go back. There. I don't if he think goes that back I to don't Florida think and they even look at him wrong. I, yeah, he I, wants the, I, I don't think right? yeah, but I don't yes. think they can uh -huh. keep him out of Florida, but they can certainly keep harassing him. In See, I thought they right. could keep him out. I thought they could keep him out just because they don't want to take responsibility for all of the parole crap. And, you know, that that's that had come off. of. They, they, they don't have a right to be able to do that. And they already opened their mouth and basically said, we're going to go after you for anything. So he actually could go in and rob a liquor store. <laughs> and then they arrest him and be like, hey, you guys are just targeting me. You already said you're going to target me. So he back in jail so fast because they violate his parole. Yeah. You know, he only served nine years of a 30 year sentence, was it? Was it 18 or 30 years uh, that he got? I think uh, he got 30. Uh, 30. Yeah, but so, the people that actually committed the major crime, they got I, like six yeah, months. But if, if, but if he spits on the sidewalk, he goes back to prison. No. Right. No. He, the Florida fucked up. They opened up their mouth and said, we're going to target you. So he can do whatever he wants to do now. Mm, I don't think so. Yeah. 
Um, you know, if he violates the law and they got him dead to rights, then, you know, it's... You they, know. they have to have 100% exact on it, videotaped and everything, because the Attorney General in Florida, and I don't know if it was the Attorney General, somebody in Florida spoke up and said, you're not welcome here, we're going to be coming after you, we're going to be looking at you for anything and everything you do. It, they fucked up, I say. But they can. You know, when you're on parole, you don't have the same rights as the rest of the people. You are still you're an American so, that's citizen. That's what I thought. You you're open right. to search uh, at, at, at any time. You're open to drug and, out, and uh, drug test any time. Uh, you know, the cop can pull you over. If you're on parole, uh, he, he can search your car. He can do whatever he wants. Uh, but you don't have uh, the same rights as a free guy true yeah yeah well anyway i mean the question is uh you know i mean the the man has only ever been found guilty of one thing and that was the nevada deal okay there he was found guilty he spent 10 years in prison for that but he's still on the hook he's still on the hook he's for still, what oh. he's still on the hook for the goldmans no, no, he's so, on the hook for the rest of that uh, yes. violation, that uh, 10 years that he served. Yeah. Is yeah. Only portion. He got convicted. He got convicted of that, and he served 10 yeah. years of, a, I guess, a 30-year sentence. So if he screws up at all, he goes back to jail. Do you think yeah, that... The, the, the funny thing is, is the guy who he supposedly convicted, you know, committed the crime against... You know, was willing to pick him up from prison to drive him wherever hey, he wanted to go. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're friends they're good now. Buddies now. Roman Polanski's uh, girlfriend, who got rate, uh, who at uh, 13 years old or whatever, she said that she didn't want Polanski pro uh, prosecuted. Yeah. So you know, even though the victim, is however, in, in you know, she's Oklahoma. been she's been saying that for years. I know, yeah, but she's the been saying that for years. Cases well, are saying enough is enough. And yet the government can still prosecute. Well, I mean, what happened, you know, so there, are a whole, there are a whole bunch of things involving the Polanski thing, which have more mitigating and horrendous circumstances. And that was that the city of Charity. L.A. said that if he would admit to having done what he did, OK, yeah. they would commute his sentence and only do time served or something or send him away for 30 days. Mm -hmm. And then, at the last minute, as he was about to give himself up so he could go for that 30 days, they reneged on the deal. Yeah. So he then said, well, fuck this. I'm just going to leave the country. You know. And, yeah. and, and that guy got... And I, uh, I, I, think he got I think he got screwed. Okay? Yeah. Well, look, on the Manson deal, you know, Sharon Tate, wasn't that his wife? Uh, yes. Was, was yeah. Polanski's uh, wife. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, this guy's had some bad luck. Uh, well, you know, I mean, the, the thing is that, you know, he ran off to Europe. And yeah. the fact is he was a European to begin with. He was Polish, uh, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly. And yes. uh, he, was a, a, he did a, a picture called Knife in the Water, which was his debut to the world, and then came to the United States and started directing films here. He went into exile, so to speak. But it wasn't really exile because it was... He knew Paris, he knew Poland, he knew Europe, you know, and he made, a, he won an Academy Award for Best Director while in that exile for the piano, or not the piano, uh, the pianist. Um, so not, yeah. Yeah, and he was terrific. I mean, yeah. uh, and he, so he's been very successful. I think he just would like to come back to the United States. Uh, if nothing more, to just pick up a few award, Lifetime Achievement Awards, which would probably be thrown his way if he ever did. You know, but it it it, uh, it. I think what happened to Polanski was a, was a was a real shame. Uh, on top of the fact that you know, here was a guy whose wife got murdered horrendously by the Manson family, had the his future baby ripped out of her stomach. Right. You know, and he's supposed Karma. he's supposed to then come back from that and be normal. Karma. You know, he raped a thirteen year old. That's what he gets. No, no, he, he, no. He didn't rape a thirteen year old. He had sex with a thirteen year old. As to whether he raped her or not is another question altogether. But forget that part of it. That happened long after the Manson murder. You know, so uh, uh, it, that could have contributed to his state of mind. You know? Yeah, but we won't know because he never went to court. So yeah, uh, he went to. Well, didn't he go to court and get convicted? No, he never got convicted, but he was about to say, okay, I, 
you know, Bengolo Contendere, and I'll go to jail for 30 days. But then it turned out that the district attorney wanted to slam him in jail for like 10 years, and that's when he decided to take off because they reneged on the deal that had already been made by his lawyers. And yeah. yet, to this day, they will not allow, they, they'll yeah. allow him to come back here as long as he is willing to either stand trial or to admit to his guilt. Now, they could say to him, if you admit your guilt, we'll, tell, we'll just say, okay, it's all right. We're not going to yeah. throw you in jail. But no matter what they promise, they will not promise that ahead of time. And he doesn't want to come back here because of the way he got screwed the first time. Yeah. Don't blame him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and he's what, in his 80s? Uh, he's uh, he's got to be in, getting there. You yeah. know. Um, no, no. It, but, that was the discussion I was having with somebody about the, the mass murderer's uh, girlfriend. I wouldn't. I would have hired a lawyer like she did, but I would not come back onto United States soil why? until I was completely cured. Just because you just—it's safer to be I in, think, in where she I was think, than it is. To be I, I think she came back to the United States because I think she wanted to say, "Hey, I have nothing to hide," you know, right. and right. I'm putting myself but in your hands, and I'm going to give you all the answers you need. Because I don't have any real answers to this situation. And coming back here and facing prosecution is better than being a, a, an older woman in the Philippines. Why the hell would she want to? Why would she ever? Oh face wait, a minute. you can't say that. I mean, you know, uh, Rob is married to a woman from the Philippines. <gasps> well, I'm still a Filipino, to, a Filipina too. You know. Oh yes, you are. Oh, he you? slipped a Filipino. Filipina. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a flippy. Yeah. Okay, uh, but uh, um, you know, I I I think she came back. And by the way, the Philippines is not where she was born. She was born in uh, somewhere else. Uh, she's from another country, and then they moved to the Philippines when she was. She's from Australia. From Australia, that's it. Is she? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, I would have and, there and, and not, yeah. um, he yeah. he sent her away. She thought she he was breaking up with her. Actually, he was yeah. getting yeah. her. He was I getting would've... he was getting her out of town. You know, so he could do yeah, this. Yeah, she asked to blow the hundred thousand dollars. The yeah. only thing that he sent her was a hundred thousand dollars. Who's that? And that's, she asked to blow fake. that on a what? lawyer. It's fake. That's fake. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how long have you and say been she together? She asked to blow the hundred thousand dollars on a lawyer. So yay. How 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 long have you been together, Phil? Ten years. Ten years. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Not married, huh? I uh, I don't know if I want to touch that again. <laughs> you know, after you've been, been divorced, I know I, I don't know how Alex has done it four times. You know. I, <laughs> well, I mean, like, to begin with, I and I I, I met uh, a person that I said I think I could live the rest of my life with this woman. You know, yeah. I was sadly mistaken. But uh, <laughs> no, sorry if you're listening, dear. Just kidding. I'm always going for the joke. <laughs> Right. You know, I um, uh, and my, by the way, my camera froze again tonight, and I just noticed it a couple minutes ago. But I don't think it was for too terribly long, and I don't think anybody noticed because I don't I, I don't move much here. But uh, for some reason, the the camera freezes if I have like too many people on at the same time or something. I don't know why it's not the camera that you're seeing me through. Because you're seeing me through this camera, and they're seeing me through this one. So we see half of your face. Yeah, tonight I uh, didn't have the uh, the freezing uh, that I had uh, for the last week, but yeah. uh, when, when the wave calls me back with their fiber optics, I'm definitely going to go for it. Uh, mm -hmm. Wave, I guess, is the equivalent of FiOS uh, in but, my area. Yeah, but Phil, when they say they're going to be in your area soon, that could be three years. From no, no, no. They're now. With the two, with the same service that Rob has, but coming soon is the gig up and the gig down. I can get the two fifty or uh, whatever whatever Rob yeah. has. I so can get. They're a coax company right now in your area, and it might be two to three years that they have five. Now years. let me ask you this, Jason: Do you work for a fiber company? No, I work for a company that does everything. Okay. I'm going to be on a fiber project in a week. Yeah. Now you you say does everything. As an example, what uh, I mean, what is it? AT and T you work for? I 
I can say that I work for a company that has Telegraph in their actual name. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and and they're doing fiber so too skip, now, as yeah, well. Yeah, pat yourself well, on the back. Just, just think A T and T. Yeah, are they do, and so they're doing fiber too, right? Yes, yeah, everybody's doing fiber. If you know, if you're not doing fiber, you're a dumbass. Comcast. <coughs> Sorry. Well, how about Spectrum here in Manhattan? I got to tell you, I I really got to say this. I've never been so happy with with a choice in cable operators in my life. Basically, what I'm going to be doing is the exact same thing, and I've done it in the past too. The exact same thing that was put in your apartment. I'm going to be on a we call an MDU project, a multi dwelling unit project. Yeah, and that's what unfortunately we're concentrating on right now more than anything else is just apartment buildings. You know, you know what? Um, um, it what, what's great about it is they're always surprising me. Uh, they told me that it was going to my bill was every month was going to be two hundred and thirty three dollars a month, and I went well. It's better than the three hundred and thirty six I was paying, right? Okay. And then I get the bill this month, and I know what you think is going to be the next thing I'm going to say, and it was more than that. No, it's for two hundred and twenty one dollars. And I wanted to let you know too because you were talking about I think yesterday what the, the difference between coax and what you're on now mm -hmm. what you are on now you are still sharing the same bandwidth with other people really but it's just a um, whole mess of bandwidth it, it is because it's extremely fast that they're trying to download something and it's like boom and so you're trying to download something and it's like boom and you're not doing that boom boom at the same time actually actually i have more speed i have more speed than you need yeah, yeah, how does net neutrality affect having these kinds of speeds? Uh, is there any correlation? Net neutrality happens outside of whatever comes into this apartment. Once I go out to, when I put my website online, for instance, uh, net mm -hmm. neutrality would affect how my carriage is, they may put me on a slower pipe going out, but it has nothing to do with what I'm capable of. I see. You know, I mean, you can go to some websites that are very slow websites, and I don't care if you've got the power I've got. It's the, going to be the slow. The biggest thing that the net neutrality did before in the past and needs to keep on doing is saying that your carrier can't slow down if you go to your competition's website. Right. That That is what is important. Because part of net neutrality, and, and you know, Rob's there, you know, it, that it was the... Uh, uh, I forget what it's called, but you can put weights on different things on voice calls, have a certain weight on video QoS, calls. Yeah, quality, QoS, of service. quality of service. So, quality of service is very important. What Rob does, you know, he does that for his customer, they do that for them, but they didn't want the, the provider to do that for you as a customer. But it actually is a good thing for them to do a QoS. For you, yeah. because you can have a lag in your opening your email where you don't want a lag on your voice call. Well, yeah. as I said, you know, the thing I was surprised at is that I was quoted, you know, your bill will be $233 every month because that's because of uh, I added something. I added the new extended thing, which is $5 <coughs> more a month. And I get the first bill and they were supposed to charge me $33 a month for three months for setting up the new system. And son of a bitch, they sent me a bill for two hundred and twenty-one dollars. Maybe I, they didn't charge you. Maybe they didn't charge me. Yeah. Or you but, missed uh, the billing cycle. No, I, 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 I this is a full. It's the first full billing cycle. All right. So, who knows what the what the story is? I mean, it, it's. Uh, uh, I but I'm I'm happy with. It. I mean, sure, if, it, go, if, anything, if but... it goes up thirty dollars, <laughs> I don't really give a shit because. I'm, I'm getting channels I never got before, you know, I'm getting a good clean picture and I got a theme song that will start playing here and everybody will be able to hear it because of the crisp clear sound you're getting because of my fast pipe and I'm not bragging about my sexual prowess when I Your say that. Your crack pipe? Anyway, hey Jason, thank you so much. I'm glad she lets you out once every two weeks. I wish she let you out every night. Uh, Hi, uh... Phil Meyer, thank you. Kevin, thank you. Jeff Stein, thank you. Anthony Magno, was there fire? The guy right up on is burning me. My mother's friend, uh, okay. she was all nervous. So Mike, was thank you. You've been rather quiet Just tonight. Uh, Patrick, sure. thank you. And uh, Rob, always thank you. I'm sorry about your team. 
Renee, yeah. always a delight to hear from you. And Brian, the same goes for you. I think it'd be very nice if all of you gave a big, big wave goodbye. Okay? Wave bye-bye. There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. And uh, it's, a, it's a, it was a good citizen panel, too. We had a good time uh, with them. And, uh, you know, uh, we'll uh, be uh, uh, seeing them all again probably next week on this program. Stay tuned for Jack and Amy. They're next with a program called The uh, Intersection. And that is followed at 1 o'clock in the morning, Eastern Daylight Time, uh, by the uh, people from Connections. Okay? A really good show. If you haven't listened to it, it's a lot of fun. It really is. In the meantime, I'm Alex Bennett. I'll see you again Tuesday, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, should you happen upon her, tell her that I love her. <laughs>